Welcome back folks, here we have exercise number 3 of problem set number 5 of group theory. We are investigating the C-infinity V group, which consists out of all rotations around a fixed axis. And then we also take all reflection planes, which go through this fixed axis into account. And by the rules of obtaining conjugacy classes, we get that E is a, the identity element is a separate conjugacy class and then you have conjugacy classes with rotations with uh, the same angle uh, in the plus minus the same angle in each conjugacy class and if you uh, number the angles of rotation with, with 1 to infinity you can do that because it's countable you can uh, arrive at this notation for the conjugacy classes you have infinite number of them and then you have uh, uh, all reflection planes in the same conjugacy class because the different reflection planes can be brought into each other by the rotations. So that's enough to uh, start off by writing down the character table right here. So you have the conjugacy classes on top and then you have a separate column for the basis function. This should be nothing new to you because, well, you have the identity representation gamma m0 plus where you have ones everywhere but the uh, elements where you have an inversion. Gamma m to the 0 minus gives you the parity. I'm sorry, here you have a minus, here you have a plus, this identity, this is a parity representation. This notation should be uh, familiar, you should be familiar with that notation from the uh, exercise with uh, where we uh, derive the character table of C infinity. So the gamma m1 representation uh, is a two-dimensional representation. You have the matrix with the cosine, minus, sine, sine, cosine. If you take the trace of it, we have two cosine phi, and here you have zero. And for m equal to two, all you do is you double that angle. So a general, uh, the general gamma m th irreducible representation, uh, the character of r plus minus phi looks like 2 times cosine m phi and again a 0 for the reflections. Now here comes the tricky part. We want to distribute some basis functions. We choose the d1 basis functions of exercise number 2 for that and we distribute them onto these uh, irreducible representations and it's uh, kind of uh, something between guess, lucky guess or, or know it you should know it or you guess lucky but uh, anyway so what is left invariant under any rotation any reflection is of course the screw axis which is z so z must be uh, a basis function and also uh, a good basis function which is left invariant under any rotation any reflection is cont uh, one containing z's and r squared so these are basis functions for our identity representation now we think about well what vector transforms according to a simple rotation well uh, this is obviously true for an arbitrary vector x y and by the same argument we used above, x times z and y times z should transform according to m equal, gamma m equal to 1 as well. Because again z is left invariant. Now for uh, gamma m equal to 2 we obtain x squared minus y squared comma 2xy. This is kind of tricky to get. Um, this is one where you where you should know it. Um, when you go into the details and write down the uh, the rotation matrix applied onto a vector, uh, an arbitrary vector x y with the twice you uh, twice the angle, you do some geometric identities and you arrive at that formula. But it's a quite tedious calculation, and it's not very instructive. So know it or don't know it. That's the thing over here. And these are some basis functions. You can do them uh, that same thing with other basis functions. Just some hints what you could do. Okay, 
thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, if you have, if you want me to write down that calculation, please send me an email and I do a separate video for it. But if there's no need for it, I won't do it. Okay, bye.